Are we ready? Okay, I would like to call the meeting to order. This is the regular meeting of the Public Arts Commission of the City of Palm Springs for Thursday, June 8th, 2017. Um, Ms. Henning, would you call the roll, please? Yes, good afternoon. Um, Commissioner Brenner? Present. Commissioner Gladstone? Present. Commissioner Murray? Present. Chair Shepherd? Present. And Commissioner Yanni will not be here today. Very good. Um, now, may I have a motion to accept the agenda? Uh, I make a motion to accept the agenda. I'll second. Very good. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Um, now we come to the time for public comments. This time has been set aside for members of the public to address the Public Arts Commission mm -hmm. on items of general interest within the subject matter jurisdiction of the Public Arts Commission and agenda items if the member of the public cannot be present later in the meeting at the time the item is heard by the Commission. Additionally, members of the public may address the Commission on each item listed on the posted agenda at the time it is heard. Although the Public Arts Commission values your comments pursuant to the Brown Act, it generally cannot take any action on items not listed on the posted agenda. Five minutes is assigned for each speaker. And I would ask you to be sure and introduce yourself before you speak and spell your name for our minute taker. Um, who would like to speak? Okay, go ahead. Good morning to the Public Arts Commission. My name is Judy Beertrack. This I sing. <laughs> <laughs> that says nothing about my performances. <laughs> my name is Judy Deertrack, and that is D E E R T R A C K K, and I am a candidate for city council. And all of a sudden, probably after years of absence, you're beginning to see all of us floating around, and I apologize for that. But I, because of that, I want to explain something. I started to come in regularly to the Public Arts Commission meetings four years ago when I ran for City Council. And there has been a four-year gap where I have not been appearing before any of the commissions and councils, and there was a very particular reason for it. Um, I went uh, into two very, very in-depth projects on city business, and because of it, I retreated. One of those was... Um, something that came out in the press about two weeks ago. Um, another candidate, Mr. Robert Stone and myself, compiled a massive file and went into the FBI with it with respect to city business. This um, absorbed almost three years of my time, 7,000 hours of unpaid public service, and in some respects, it, it has created at times difficulties with the city. It's embarrassing because a lot of friends and acquaintances that feel compromised by this um, sometimes get a little nervous at our presence. Um, but that's part of public service. It's just part of, I think, all of what we have to deal with. The other thing I want to thank you for so far is the five-minute speaking time. I went in to the city last night and I went into 1 PS and the speaking time is two minutes at the end of the agenda. I spoke very powerfully last night about my objection that I believe this is a Brown Act violation, certainly with public hearings with the city, because the Brown Act ensures that we have adequate time to express ourselves. But my real concern, and I call it two minutes at midnight with the city, is because the city itself, the agenda is so long now, it's regularly going past 11 o'clock you can end up with as many as 50 or 60 people in the audience. They're professionals. They charge out at 250 an hour, heaven knows. And they are sitting there for five hours to get to talk for two minutes. And if anybody is listening on television, they have tuned out long ago. And the city council is exhausted. So when I saw 1PS copycat into that time frame for their agenda, I am pleading with you. Please keep to the five-minute schedule because in a two-hour meeting this morning with 1PS, 
There were four speakers. They denied us a minute of time, which was precious to us, and all it meant was that they had to stay four extra minutes. So I'm, I'm asking you and thanking you for the five-minute time period. It is invaluable. The, um, I will start regularly attending public meetings again and commissions now that the research is over. I just finished another project on evaluating commercial permits that have been issued by the city over the last 10 years. As part of that and the FBI probe, district attorney probe, what I was looking at are development impact fees and whether any of those have been inappropriately waived by a developer that was in any kind of kickback scheme to the city. And those waivers do in fact impact some of the commissions such as yourself who may be getting funding from DIF fees. I did take a look at your ordinance. It looks like you do get some of your funding from that source. And if you'll notice this morning, I actually sent a communication public record request to Mr. Reddy and to Marcus Fuller asking on one of, or I won't even say one, the biggest commercial project going right now is the downtown plan. It has been implicated in a potential scheme. What we noticed in investigating it, that the development impact fees were consistently waived for that project. So I have asked for an accounting from the city on whether that impacted this committee. Um, some of the committees and commissions, or, uh, or folks like 1PS, are extremely embarrassed in bringing up issues surrounding the investigation. Part of the reason I'm campaigning is to make it comfortable to talk about this, because this is like an alcoholic family that has an alcoholic son or daughter. There is an embarrassment a feeling that we're not allowed to discuss something because of shame. And I want to encourage you that I think it is just the opposite. Part of getting healthy and part of remediation and recovery is to know that we can discuss issues of great importance without shame, without blame, and without embarrassment. So with that in mind, um, thank you very much for your public service. I wish to remain very connected to you, very involved in what you're doing, and uh, properly educated. And I would love to at some point meet perhaps with your chair or any of you individually to get a better understanding of the public service you've done over the last few years. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else who would like to speak? Okay. Introduce yourself, please. Okay. Good afternoon. My name is Isaiah Jeffrey, and it's I-Z-A-Y-A-H. J-E-F-F-R-E-Y. I am a multi-award winning artist and a multimedia artist, but most importantly, I'm a humanist and um, a gardener and a friend and a neighbor and just one man, but I have some big hopes and big dreams. I hope to apply for your arts council and maybe you'll consider me. I'm working with Judy Deertrack on her campaign and um, I just came today because it's time for me to be here. And I just wanted to thank you, and I wanted to look at this. I'm a little nervous with this, so thanks for bearing Appreciate it. Um, it's new. I feel like I'm We're five so years old. We're so intimidating. I feel like I'm five years old. <laughs> so, um, so, <laughs> so I just want to thank you, um, and I, I'm looking at this, and your agenda looks really good, and I just say I'm in support of this transgender remembrance sculpture project. That looks really cool. If, that's, if I can say something about that, that sounds like a really fantastic thing to uh, talk about. So thanks for having this today. Very good. And if you can stay long enough, we will, that's a little bit further down the agenda, but we'll get there. Um, is there anyone else who'd like to speak? Hello. My name is Jason Mascarinas, M-A-S-C-A-R-E-N-A-S. -A -A um, I've been a resident here for 18 years, an avid horseman for well over 40 years. Um, my question today is because of, um, you know, the buzz that the Bogert, Frank Bogert statue was being considered for relocation. Um, I don't, I haven't received any definite word on that. It's off the table. It, it's, you'll notice it's not on our agenda. Right. There's, but there's no further discussion that we're planning to have. Oh, I see. So, okay, well, can I just mention one thing yeah. about <laughs> heritage? The Western heritage is really, really important and integral part of Palm Springs history. 
Um, I'm a member of uh, Desert Riders, established in 1930 here and still very active. Also very involved with trail development and maintaining all the, the trails that tourists and everybody else enjoy, residents. Also, I'm a member of Los Compadres Club and Stables. They were established in 1939. Uh, very active to this day. I just want to uh, just emphasize that the Western heritage is really, really important. And any, any artwork or sculpture throughout the city you know, identifies that importance to tourists and residents and the people that are part of this city. So just wanted to mention that. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Um, anyone else? Okay. Oh, sorry. Owen Kiley, K I E L E Y. Uh, I'm a 62 year resident of Palm Springs. I was pl uh, pleased to be able to ride with Frank Bogart on a regular basis and in business and also trail ride with Frank. And I know that this is off the table supposedly, but I reiterate what Jason has to say about. All of our Western heritage artwork that started with this town and, start, and was part of starting this town with my great grandmother Nellie Kaufman. And to even think about removing any of this at any time in the future would be a great disservice to her, one of the founders of this town, along with Carl Licken, who some of the trails are named after here, and Earl Kaufman, my grandfather, who another trail is named after, who were very good friends of Frank Bogart's. The discussion that you guys have on your agenda down there for creating a subcommittee, I believe it is, for finding out the price of a base for this transgender statue, uh, I really hope that you will bring that up in future meetings so we kind of know what the citizens of the city are, in, are uh, paying for, for even though something is given to us as a sculpture, sometimes it's cost prohibitive, just like the fountain is downtown, to maintain or to install in the first place. So I really hope that, that you would look into this very seriously and diligently before we're saddled with another white elephant like we have in the park downtown. Um, I did leave some inquiries with you about being on a subcommittee with, with your committees here, and I have yet to receive a response back, so at some time I would like to see a response back. We would appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, okay. Hi. Hi. I hadn't come prepared to speak. I'm Beth Grossman. I've been a resident full time, 35 years here in Palm Springs. And um, I'm a desert writer and was very familiar with Frank Bogart. I, I rode with him for many years. And I think I'm going to just say what I feel here. Um, the idea of taking Frank's statue from the city hall spot that he's kind of lived at for so many years and moving it to some, not a godforsaken place, but someplace way out of the way, uh, not only will rub people like myself, horse people wrong, but those of us that have a true feeling and connect with the history of Palm Springs. He was not only known as a horseman, um, you folks know probably more than I, of all the all the good that he did building this community. His name is well known, well known, uh, all over, not just Southern California. And um, he, he deserves to be there. He is history in Palm Springs. And whatever it is you want to replace his statue with, why don't you consider putting it somewhere else? Put it where you want to put him. I mean, people know Frank. They've come to respect Frank and they respect the culture of Palm Springs. He's history here. And it's enough of, of our history that's getting wiped away. It's eroding. Each year I'm here, I see it disintegrate a little more. And, and I feel it's a shame because what was a wonderful, wonderful community is still wonderful, but it's lost that special feeling um, for those of us that have been around a while and that want to see Palm Springs remain what it is. It's a leader in all different aspects. And uh, I'm just putting in my two cents regarding moving that statue. Thank you. It would be a great mistake. Thank I, you. I, I think there'll be a lot of people that feel the same way. Thank, Thank you. you. Let me just 
clarify one thing. Um, we were asked by a member of the city council to consider whether there was a better location for the Frank Bogert sculpture. It was on our agenda last month. We discussed it at length. We heard from probably 20 people, um, and it is no longer under consideration. So there is there's no need to speak for or against it because it's not on our agenda and we are not going to consider it. So just thank you for your comments, but it's, it is not on the agenda at now or at any time in the future that I know of. So do you want to? Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Sharon Affelbaum. I came here in 1969 with a newborn baby in my arms. One of the first people I met was Frank Bogert. He was the guy who had the camera who took pictures of the pretty girls around the little hotels, sent those pictures back to their hometowns with a caption, it's January in Palm Springs, the sun is shining, there are girls around the pool, don't you want to come visit this lovely place? He was the first chamber of commerce in our town. And he was a man of many talents. He was a renaissance man. Just to let you know, when I served on the city council in the late 1980s, I was the one who proposed a public arts commission. I thought it would be a fabulous idea. I still do. Palm Desert was way ahead of us then, but now we have a public arts commission. And I know you'll do the right thing by associating history with art as it's always been. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, is that everyone? Are we set? Okay, thank you very much for fi finding us here in the convention center. <laughs> we feel a little lost ourselves. Madam Chairman, I have a question. Am I out of order by asking the question? I don't think so. To just to sit. I just have a question, Madam Chairman. Uh, excuse my ignorance. Is there a street named after Mr. Bogart? Oh, yes, I live off of it. <laughs> <laughs> I live off Bogart. Well, and there's, there's a bridge that we were involved in the design oh. of right. um, that you. is on Bogart. <laughs> um, we, right. um, okay, um, now may I have a, we, we don't have any minutes from the last meeting. Will we at some point or? Um, yes, okay. you will have minutes whenever the Our commission next meeting. meets next, next. Okay. Okay. be it um, in July or September. Okay, very good. Um, now, we, we always leave a space for comments from the city manager, um, and I don't think he's not here, there's nothing pending, but perhaps Ms. Goolsby could fill us in on anything in terms of the budget or the city that we need to know, and otherwise. Did you guys attend the Last night, did you guys, did anybody go to the city council meeting? No, I watched it on TV, <laughs> on my computer. <laughs> so you know they're going to have to, they're going to look at um, moving $3, $3 million from the um, reserves into um, a fund for the pension, and they're going to look at cutting like a little over $3 million um, from the regular budget. I guess they're going to give themselves a deadline until about October to do that, and they have a subcommittee uh, meeting on that, and they've actually reached out, I think, to 1PS and some other um, I guess you call stakeholders to kind of weigh in on that because that's going to be kind of a difficult. That's a that's a kind of a big chop. But um, that's the only thing I have right now. Um, but. I actually have one other thing I gathered from watching the um, the meeting. If you remember, this commission declined to approve the mural at Trio because they hadn't followed. They hadn't applied before they painted the mural. Um, it subsequently went to the Architectural Review Board and the Planning Commission, and last night to the City Council. Um, the other two commissions recommended approval. However, when it got to the City Council last night, um, there was a motion to approve it, and Councilman Roberts um, asked if there was any fine involved if you didn't apply first and sort of retroactively applied. And the answer is no, but the feeling among several of the council members was that there ought to be, there ought to be some penalty for just charging ahead and then afterwards asking forgiveness. Um, and so it, it has been suggested to the staff, and I'd like to say, I, hopefully we will be involved to look at the mural ordinance, number one, see if we can make it less onerous. Um, the initial 
fee is $1,500 plus a couple of other things. Um, and that is supposed to cover the staff time that it takes to review this. But by the time the TRIO mural got to the city council, there were 27 pages of report from, you know, a couple of pages from each commission. So um, we've had this, this ordinance for a couple of years now. It did start with some controversial murals, which, had, which were subsequently approved. The only mural that's gone all the way through the process and been approved is the Wells Fargo one. And the, um, the one for Lulu's is following the process um, and was asked by the Planning Commission to make a couple of changes to the material that they're using, the, the aluminum, but is moving along. And so, and they did go through the whole process and pay the fees. Um, so in any case, um, I think it made an impression that, that this commission said that we didn't think we should approve it after the fact without some, um, what now looks like perhaps a penalty fee. So if, um, if it comes up in the staff over, say, the summer, uh, if you could just remind everyone that we would be happy to help simplify that. Absolutely, yes. It, it, um, it probably doesn't have to go through four commissions. To <laughs> <laughs> and, and I think we'd be happy to take the lead because we're talking about public art, so. Uh, Definitely, I'll take that back. Okay, so good. any other, um, if there's no other comments on sort of where we are in the city, um, the first item of new business is um, <laughs> a, a, the issue of whether we should cancel our July 13th, 2017 meeting. Um, the reason for this is that at this point, um, there are only five commissioners and we know that three of us will not be here in July. So that would mean we don't have a quorum. I did learn that they are conducting interviews for members of the, people who have applied to be on the commission on July 5th. I found out. You found out the date. Yes. <laughs> um, it's on July 5th. <laughs> However, um, that means that they will have missed the um, city council session where these people could be appointed and would not be appointed before the 13th anyway. So um, if there are no objections, um, I would, well, I would like to move that we cancel the July 13th meeting of the Public Arts Commission due to a lack of a quorum. Second. You want to, someone seconded. Second, yes. yes. Is there any other discussion? Does anyone? Well, being at the meeting all by myself didn't sound very good. <laughs> so for all of you that are leaving. It's <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's interesting because we, right now, with only five members, three is a quorum, but we won't even have that. So, um, OK. Are, all in favor? Aye. Yeah. Any objections? Okay. Um, now, the next item of new business is to um, review the subcommittee members that we have currently. And I would like to recommend that we create a subcommittee for our involvement in the public park, in the downtown park. Um, should the project get to the point where they would like representatives from various commissions. Several years ago in the first round of planning for the park, uh, there was a representative from the Public Arts Commission and from the Parks Department, as well as planning and others that were invited to a series of meetings to review the plan. It's entirely possible that it will not um, get there at this point this summer, um, but I would like to um, recommend that um, we appoint Mara. I've been being the representative, but that we add Mara to this committee because um, A, she will be here um, on and off during the summer, and also because of her relationship with the museum, she's in a good position to sort of coordinate what we learn about the park with what the museum is doing since the area that's 
on some plans called the sculpture garden is meant to be kind of a, a joint endeavor. I'm going to make a suggestion. Um, perhaps um, as the commission is considering creating the subcommittee, a um, couple of things. One, perhaps uh, the group holds off until September when there is a full commission sitting. And secondly, um, since Mara's employer is the museum, maybe it should be considered, and you're a member of the Board of Trustees, that other people, other members of this commission consider joining the subcommittee so that, I don't know, there doesn't perceive to be um, a, com a com subcommittee that's weighted so heavily. Right. Uh, that's I'd fine. Like to I'd yeah. like to just present myself as a citizen of this city. <laughs> and, Understood. Um, you know, I'm also somebody who has uh, uh, two young children. I've lived here for five years. And actually, my interest in this being a part of the conversation about the park, which I can do on or off a committee, has a lot to do with the place of children in this city and what I see as a real lack of resources for our kids <coughs> in downtown Palm Springs. Once again, just a comment to be on the record and to be considered by the commission mm -hmm. um, in the now or in the future. It also, um, if we wait until September, it will allow us to have three people on each subcommittee. I was just looking quickly, are there any subcommittees that have more than two at the moment? I don't think so. Uh, well, uh, oh, the pub publicity and so yeah, why don't I'll take myself off of that one so that um, there's only two mm -hmm. and um, yeah. Um, is, does anyone, would anyone like to change committees while we're just Love my committee. Love your committee. Okay. <laughs> I, can I make an, a recommendation? Um, perhaps for thinking about a subcommittee that deals with artist commissions, in that um, a sort of bigger, a sort of broader uh, project um, would allow us to address, you know, commissions both at the park, in other parks, and other parts okay. of the city and that possibility with the development downtown, um, you know, there is a likelihood that we have funding to, to actually embark on a slightly, a project of a larger scale. And so that maybe um, people on that committee could present themselves at meetings where mm -hmm. the subject of commissions would, artist commissions or artist projects would arise. Well, why don't we vote to create two subcommittees but not put people in them? Um, so it would be a, a downtown park subcommittee, which whose duties will perhaps become clearer <laughs> by fall, and um, another one on commissions. Um, I know one of the things that we've been batting around for a long time is um, something at Desert Highlands, and I suppose that would be called a commission if we if we commissioned a new mural or if we did another piece there. So is everyone okay with the name commissions as a subcommittee name or should it be commissions and? Why not acquisitions? Mm. Very good. Okay. So may I just have a vote to approve the creation of two more subcommittees, one for the downtown park and one for commissions and acquisitions. I make a motion that we um, add two new subcommittees, a park site, park, downtown, downtown park. park site committee and an artist commissions and acquisitions commi subcommittee. Like to be um, members to be named at a later date. A second. Okay. Player to be named. It. Yes. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Any opposed? No. Okay, so um, now we're moving to unfinished business. Um, the first thing we have on our agenda is to review the tentative schedule that we made during the study session. Um, and you should have a copy of it. Um, it 
it's certainly still a draft, but I think that we should um, discuss a little bit how we can get these dates into public calendars, the city calendar um, and um, the museum calendar for our Thursday evenings. Um, and I don't know what else. There's some, there's a nonprofit calendar that has a lot of, but I think bigger events than these. But I think we, we, we really need to coordinate with the school district and with the museum and any other education programs. Um, the city calendar seems to, the last time I looked at it, um, our meetings, for example, were only put on like a few days ahead of the meeting or when the, when the agenda goes out. But a lot of the other commissions, if they meet at a certain time, it, it's on the calendar on a permanent basis. So maybe we could just get into the... Sure, we could look ahead. That's what I do with 1PS. I kind of move it ahead like to the end of the year. Yeah, just so people know if we could going. do that. Because we, we do have a, a set date. Um, um, I'd like to recommend as well that um, once this calendar is mostly complete, that we distribute at least the fall months to Palm Springs Life. I understand they, you know, they have a sort of seasonal issue um, with arts-related events, but their deadline is rather early, so um, at some point in the summer. So I just like to recommend getting in that is a really great way to access both our local audiences and also the many visitors right. to the city. And I think um, particularly the. Um, as soon as there is an idea of where the portraits of a city will go after this, that's worth an article, really. And maybe someone can um, give Palm Springs Life not just the date, but some examples of the photography, and you know, that would be nice to get some attention to that. Also, we got um, we got offered an event for October 19th at the museum, um, which I would like to turn over to the Education Committee. Um, Digicom has, is in the process of making a short film about Desert X, and I'd like to show it on a Thursday night at the museum with the addition of either some of the artists who were there or um, a hands-on activity. But since it, it's, it's a very short film, I think, uh, but it could play on a continuous basis in the auditorium while there's something going on in the, or it could play on that screen that they have. Yeah. So um, if I can just update yeah. um, just about all of these dates uh, that include the pop-up events at the museum. I've confirmed with the museum education staff that those dates are available and they're aware of our interest in doing a screening for that first sort of seasonal Thursday pop-up in October, which I think is a pretty great idea since it's low impact on us and um, will be fun. So I think, I'm not sure the Annenberg Theater would be available for that, but at minimum the lecture hall, mm -hmm. which seats under 100, would be available for right. something like that. And maybe it's So I think thinking about those lobby. sites, like the lobby or the lecture hall for the kinds of programs, pop-up programs, is prob mm -hmm. are probably the best spaces to think about there. But I think there's opportunity for um, us to talk to uh, the education staff there about, you know, other spaces or possibilities. So maybe um, you and Alfonso yes. are, could mm -hmm. get together with the education staff at the museum and fill in some of these ideas. Um, but at least we have, we have picked a series of dates that, that will do it. Um, does anyone have anything else? Um, now, um, Jennifer, you want to just tell us this, this talk about pop-ups. This popped up in here, um, Artist Lecture for Portraits of a City. So we're doing something with the Desert Art Center. So I had a meeting yesterday uh, with the Desert Art, a couple of board members, and I had shared at previous meetings that they were interested in partnering with the Public Arts Commission to do some sort of lectures or art 
events throughout the season. So um, yesterday when I had the opportunity to meet with them, there were, I believe, five dates that they proposed. Um, I, I put them on your uh, handout that you have just so you could see them and consider them. Um, yes, so one of the dates was October 14th. Um, they had a spot open to do some sort of, they're calling it um, art enrichment event. And when I proposed to them that we had had a tentative portraits of a city exhibition talk slated, they offered to host that. Will, will the exhibition be there? Can Not we, necessarily, no. I know we were Could going to. Uh, the education committee has a report on the agenda about the fall showing for um, for portraits of a city, so I thought we could discuss that then. Do but you happen to know, though, if it could be there for the, like, I, I don't know. Of I would have to inquire with them. I could not if, ask. To have a lecture about it, it seems to me it would be make most sense if it was there. Otherwise, maybe have the lecture where it is. Um, so I think we need to just find out. It would be a wonderful place to have the exhibit, especially early in the fall, when maybe they're not as um, booked up. I would have to ask. I know mm -hmm. they have a show going up on um, on September 1st, and or I'm sorry, the show will go up on October 2nd, and the opening reception is on October 6th. So um, I know there are shows that are going up during that time. I would have to ask them. Okay. Once again, this is just something that was I put in there based on what we talked about yesterday. And I did share with the board that I would be having, we would have this meeting today. Mm -hmm. I presented to you and um, it was completely up to you whether this would go forward or not. Um, the next event that you see there is December 16th. The idea was to have a art mart or a holiday sale. Um, very similar to perhaps the uh, Desert X event that took place at the museum or during, de yeah, during Desert X mm -hmm. or just other holiday art sales that by you see. By the members of the... It wouldn't be by the members of the art um, necessarily Desert Art Center. Of course, it would be open to them to participate. But part of the discussion was perhaps um, members of the commission could help curate. It could be somewhat of an invitational to invite artists to sell their um, their work there during that time. Uh, the next one is on January 20th. Um, the Art Center was interested in doing an educational class on understanding art. Once again, there's a very rough title there, Art 101, Understanding Abstract Art. Um, I thought of you, Mara. You're a curator. Mm -hmm. and you're <laughs> Molly. Um, and then another event on the 24th of February. And then once again on March 24th. Mm -hmm. um, and I? then, so the participation required from the commission would be very minimal, perhaps help in securing or suggesti suggesting speakers, um, perhaps providing refreshments. Um, just a way to partner and support. Could, could I suggest, though, um, that for the purposes of this calendar that we put um, a partnered art enrichment at the Desert Art Center on each date without specifying what it is. Just like the museum, it says museum pop-up event. And so if we want to keep these four dates to do something with them, um, I think it, you know, it has to work in around what else we're doing. And as I say, the, if the portrait of a city is somewhere else, then if we're going to do some kind of discussion of it, I think it has to be there, which doesn't mean we couldn't do something else with the Desert Art Center. And I think in the same way that because we fund the museum, we're doing pop-up events with them, Desert Art Center is a city facility, and I think having four dates or five dates where we will do something, but I think it's premature to, I mean, that's great to brainstorm them, but I don't think they should go out on a calendar because mm. that, if they just may, these particular things may not turn out to be the right thing for that date, especially if they have a different show up 
that started in October, you know, so, so I, but I like the idea of saying that these are, is it four or five dates where we're going to do something with the Desert Art Center because that's a city facility. So I, I actually disagree with you, yeah. Sheffer. I don't think it's necessarily a bad idea to have um, a, a speaker or an artist who's participating in a show elsewhere in the city um, be there in part because of the location of the Desert Art Center and its proximity to the, to the, um, you know, the fair chicken and the, the new chicken ranch <laughs> and you know, the uptown design district. But also that there's a kind of synergy that I think is important for a small, the small arts organizations, which we all kind of are, even the big museum, to work together to sort of direct people to the other wonderful spaces throughout the city. So I'm not necessarily against that. However, I do agree with you that I'm a little wary about us uh, putting the content on this sort of calendar, which is circulated for public um, without um, without us sort of establish, you know, really confirming that. So um, yeah, I think it's a great. I mean, it's a great possibility to work with them. But let's not box ourselves in uh, because you know, portraits of the city might end up on billboards and then you know it would be, uh, or there may be something, it is Arts and Humanities Month, so perhaps the first event there is more generally about what's going on in the arts in Palm Springs in general, or you know, what get people from a bunch of galleries to come and talk about that. I'd also you know. like to recommend that we um, you know, try strongly to really make it a partnered event in that um, it would be really great for Desert Art Center to contribute um, you know, information about um, speakers and things. I, I hesitate about our, this commission and our limited staff continuing to develop like a lot of programming, it's one thing to find spaces, but we just don't have the manpower to really do like the research to sort of <laughs> plan like a, a program. <laughs> well, it's just it's just true, and I hesitate because our you know uh, uh, Miss Henning is just limited in her staff time. So I would really like these partnerships, even with the museum, to really be ones where sometimes we the commission brings ideas, but then sometimes the partner brings ideas. I think that's very important in terms of thinking about the reality of how much time our staff has to. Well, to and I gather so you did do this with members of the. So these yeah. were not my ideas. These right. came from the events okay. coordinator or the events person mm -hmm. um, and the president of the board. And these are based on programming that they have scheduled throughout the year and ideas that they have come up with to go with things that are already happening. As I said, I told them I would share this with you um, and let them know what I, you know, let you know what ideas and programs they had going on and see if you wanted a part of it. So um, once again, this is somewhat driven by programming that they have established. Mm -hmm. And this is what I saw as a no brainer because it's being done. Um, they're asking us to help promote the events, possibly give them suggestions, you know, use our resources as well as right. theirs and um, as a way to cross promote. By no means is this a done deal, um, nor do we have to participate. <laughs> so this is once again a suggestion um, coming from their end um, based on programming that they are working on establishing for the upcoming mm -hmm. year. And I said I would present it to you. Well, and it's possible that we could co -op, we could do something for one of their art enrichment things, just for starters, just you know, one that fits with something that we're doing. Uh, Madam Chair, um, I think this is great. I was thrilled when I came in today to see this calendar. It's something that we as a um, commission have been talking about, just nailing it down, seeing uh, just the pop-up dates right. on there is great. I think this is wonderful. Thank you. I think the missing piece of information that you just gave us, that this was an established these were the things that they were going to do. They've invited us to be a part of it. I, I say it's a no-brainer with the slight caveat of we'd love it if we find something that's really cool that we decide to do as a program, if maybe they'd be a little flexible if we came back and said, hey, we got this opportunity to bring X in, and would they be willing to work with us a little bit on that? They're 
absolutely open to that. Once again, this is what uh, they've come up with because mm -hmm. they need to plan their year as well or their season. Yeah. So this I, I was think it's throwing it out great. there. I think it's great. I, I'm thrilled to see it, and again, I, I think we're all just kind of like, ooh, but we, you know, yeah. we don't have time to do any programs, but if we at least something comes up, have right. that opportunity. I think they would, if we're as excited about something that came up, we could get them excited about it too. And okay. these are all dates that they had open. And um, like I said, these are all, these dates, by the way, are Saturday afternoons. And they just left that slot open for what they're calling art enrichment event. And, and that was. That's it. That's I, as as I think it's gone. great, and thank you for you know we're starting may, to move. May I suggest that um, this falls under our community art exhibitions category? Um, it's not an exhibition, but it is working with. Um, it's it's somewhat akin to working with the school district, um, and so I was just going to suggest that that committee, which is Commissioner Brenner and Commissioner Yanni keep the, the dialogue going with the Desert Art Center. So that- Fabulous, I'd so, love so, to. Okay, so that- it, I'll speak for uh, Commissioner Yanni and say he'd love to. So. <laughs> <laughs> right, very good, as soon as he gets back. Um, it's always- This is no, what happens when you miss Yeah, exactly, don't come back to a meeting. <laughs> okay, anything else about the calendar? Um, I yes. think it's- Yes, yeah. Madam Chair, I think this is good. The only, I think the correct uh, way of saying it uh, is the only, spur in my saddle, is that right? <laughs> uh, is that when we have the pop-up, at least from my experience of being on the commission, uh, usually commissioners don't show up. You know, there's usually one or two or none. And if we're going to do pop-ups, whether it's with the museum, um, this is not to be derogatory or negative or anything, but you know, we need to participate uh, in our pop-up events. Well, and we need to, that's why it, it's going to be very helpful to have a calendar. And because if you know that it's coming up, it's a lot easier to. And we need to show up. Yes. Yep. And, um, and I think um, it wouldn't hurt to have some reminders. And Ms. Henning, you're the only one who can do it because we can't <laughs> talk to each other. Um, <laughs> but, you know, a week before some of these things, it would be great to just have a memo or once a month with the, with the agenda for the next meeting. Oh, and by the way, there's these two pop-ups this month. The community shows up, <laughs> the commissioners. Right, well, it's been wonderful at the museum because there's hundreds of people yes. and, it's, and it's great. And we're gonna try to do more to let the people who come know that, first of all, there's no admission because of no admission charge because of the city, and secondly, that this extra programming came also from us to a certain extent. Okay. Yes. And uh, Commissioner Murray, knowing this so much further uh, in advance, um, I'll be able to get it on my calendar because you know, I book out six months in advance, so I can. <laughs> <laughs> so popular. Okay. I think it's, I think it's a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I just yeah, I'm so happy to see this. So now I know yes. to get it in my calendar, and then when something else, something else comes up, that is a priority because that's mm -hmm. I think a part of what we. Well, and, and I mean I think we've been talking about this for a year, and yeah. everyone <laughs> contributed to this, and I think we have a good. Yeah. Um, I think it would be nice, if I'm not out of order, Madam Chairman, my last point, if someone from the uh, Desert Art Center would come and talk to the commission about, you know, the vision, the shared vision. That's uh, a great idea. But in the meantime, I think that um, we should meet with this mm -hmm. subcommittee yes. Yes. to, um, but I, I agree, if, especially if we come up with a couple of, um, of these events in the fall at the first meeting in September, it would be great to have a presentation by Desert Art Center yes. about what, basically what they do and how this is gonna fit in. Um, so, cool. um, All right. I have a question before we move on. Uh, how does the commission feel about doing a Village Fest booth on October the 5th? And, um, and a, a lecture or something at 
Desert Art Center on October the 14th. And I only ask the question because we're not meeting again, again mm -hmm. until like September 11th, which is three weeks before this. Right. So if any of those things in October, any if either one of those two things are going to happen, it would be good to start working on it mm -hmm. with more time. Well, uh, October 5th is my birthday, so I would love to be there. <laughs> yeah, so I think I will be there and everybody can just celebrate it with me. With so Fest, I think it's you'll wonderful. Have all those people. I just <laughs> yes, I think that we really wanted to, to do it during October as our, you know, sort of, and hopefully have like calendars, you know, a little more artistic, but um, that we could give out with all these things. Um, I think that we should plan to do something on the 14th, and perhaps this subcommittee could get it going, um, and and um, the staff. I mean, but I think this subcommittee, and maybe should get together with the, a couple of people from the Desert Art Center, because this first one, because it's during Arts and Humanities Month, and um, you know, it could be a broader discussion or, or some kind of participatory event with some hands-on things and stuff. Matt, sure. Matt, yeah. uh, uh, the Fall Preview Modernism Week starts on October 20th, so 20th, 20th, 21st, 22nd, just something to consider. I mean, if you want to kind of tie that into that or just right uh, before. Yeah. yeah um, I'd, I'd like to recommend. Oh, yeah, I <laughs> take it that the, these dates, though, were dates that the Desert Art Center was available, right? I mean, they, they picked these because they're clear kind of on that date. Correct. So okay. can we, can, I'd like to recommend that um, we try to move this conversation to a subcommittee to try to uh, figure out a, a talk for, for that, but that if we cannot, that we, we give over the, <laughs> the, the um, if we can't confirm somebody before we adjourn for the, or the rest of the right. summer, that uh, Ms. Henning can move forward with working with Desert Art Center to program an event that we, that we can promote, promote on October 5th. 14th. Correct. Yeah, the 5th is Village. But to promote, oh, we can promote by it then, on the we fifth then do that, it. that yes. Ms. Henning can just move forward with program, programming it if the subcommittee is unable to confirm. Right. But maybe they could give you a couple of mm -hmm. yes. ideas. Um, Laura, just to, mm -hmm. um, that was part of the discussion yesterday as well. What I thought was, it, um, is, so since we will be going forward and doing the Village Fest booth on the 5th, or I will be requesting that we have a presence right. that night, mm -hmm. um, it would also give us the opportunity to promote whatever pop-up events going on at the museum. Absolutely. And so, and that's a couple weeks out. And perhaps right. we can work with this kind of imagery and template that you're, you've already sort of played around with to um, promote, I like this sort of gridded. And then we could do more like a save the date for the season or for the fall season and, um, and, 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 and have those available. And we have stu um, materials we've used before Great. and have cool. done, Great. so. Thank you. Um, now, what's the timeline um, and process for deciding where the portraits of a city go that's gonna have much wider um, Presence. Um, then this I, well, if we're done with this item, then we can move on. And there's a subcommittee report that's listed on the agenda. Okay. That was so, it's a sort of a calendar that the two, but I think I agree we should. Okay. So, Are we set with this calendar? With the um, really the only amendments are to keep those dates with the Desert Art Center, but call them. Maybe we can come up with something a little better than partnered art enrichment, something catchy with a you know, acronym or something. Us <laughs> um, and them. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you say? Us and them. Oh. Us and them, right. Us and them. Okay, um, so moving along to the item for the education outreach programming. Um, is there a report from the subcommittee on the um, Portraits of a City, which is going to debut tonight, and is there a subcommittee report on where it goes next? 
Well, I, you know, I'm concerned. Uh, I don't want to come across as a stereotypical uh, angry black man, uh, but uh, with all due respect, um, you know, I'm, I'm just at a loss with, with this whole project. It just seems as if, um, you know, the education committee, at least me and um, I can't talk for Mara, are not included in, uh, I mean, I'm just putting it out there. If I'm wrong, please correct me. Uh, but uh, I just think there's a communication gap. And uh, we, need to, we need to do something about that. Uh, educational things are happening. We have an education committee, and there's no communication. Uh, so, so there's a concern there. I just I, need to be educated. No, <laughs> I, 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 I hear you. Um, you know, and uh, last year, just um, we were fortunate that for the Martin Luther King Day exhibition, you were involved anyway. Um, but I did feel that when we got to the Cesar Chavez one, we, we almost didn't know it happened. Um, and I'm not sure that any one of us was there because we really didn't know where and when it would be done. So the question is, how can we get this wonderful exhibit of Portraits of the City have a reprise somewhere where um, it will have some impact and, and do it with the education committee? Um, I mean, do we... Uh, yeah, yeah, I would I would agree with Commissioner Murray. I'm, I'm a little confused about how the process of finding a space is, but that said, I, I, that said, um, I, I'd also like us to look into the idea of doing this as a kind of um, like a digital a digital exhibition or something. I mean, I I think I brought up this brought up this idea maybe. And may, maybe in a casual conversation, but um, or maybe a <laughs> meeting. I don't remember. But um, but just you know, there are a lot of digital billboards um, throughout the. There are a handful throughout this region, and um, at minimum, it would seem like during low season, which is you know kind of August September, we would be able to at least to do something up there digitally at you know a low cost There's if not them. free yeah. of charge so yeah i know it's just yeah maybe maybe just you know out outside this this facility so that's something i'd really like us to find a way to look into i'm not sure the process of that miss henning but um you know i think i think that meet that outlet is something that um young people today are very engaged <laughs> with, you know and i think um uh as an example you know the digicom film festival did their first online film festival mm -hmm. and they had huge numbers of hits i think tens of thousands of video pe people of videos were watched um that's quite a large number and so you know i think at minimum if it's difficult to find a location of a physical location in the fall it would be really great to look into the possibility of doing something digitally and, I, yeah. I agree and, and and in addition to that more importantly you know, to communicate that with, with everybody, or at least the education committee. Yeah, that process. It seems like the communication was there until we did Portraits of a City, or Portraits of a City was done. Um, the communication gap is broadened. Uh, so when it comes to the education committee's report, um, is this, I just don't think yeah. it's, it's, is this, it's right. This is a project of the school district that we're helping with, or is this our project that we did with them? We paid for it, right? We paid well, for the, been... the photographer who worked with the kids. Well, we, the commission had agreed to uh, offer a stipend, and yes, this idea came out of Commissioner Murray wanting to do a photography class, mm -hmm. and we managed to partner, we worked with Louisa Casterdale in the arts program, and got this into Palm Springs High School. So it was definitely a joint effort. So, well, the, unfortunately, though, we we didn't we weren't involved in all at all in right. even sort of keeping up with how it was going. Well, once what the, was, I believe you know um, we knew the schedule. Al, we had talked about it going into the school, into the classroom, um, in January, I believe it was, 
and we had our meeting at City Hall, the four of us, uh, Louisa Castrodale, Chari, yourself, and myself. Yes. And um, once it goes into the classrooms, there's not a whole lot of work for us to do because we initially worked on the curriculum um, and the program at that meeting. And from there, we kind of hand it over. And it goes into the classroom. And um, But now it's in a public gallery, right? It it's is. An, and or, yes. again, we really didn't know until last week that it, that it was going to be an opening. Um, and really, I mean, if there's so many projects that we do that it's like, you know, if a tree falls in the forest. I mean, no one really, not enough people know about this to make it worth our, the commission's time and, and the money. I mean, if, it's not that we want to run it, but we would like to sort of keep up with it, and especially this particular one where it was Commissioner Murray's idea, and he actually was prepared to put some time into it. Um, and it turned out, um, and, and I'm, I'm afraid to say that this, I understand that when one works with the school district, they, you know, there's some pretty strict procedures about, you know, we can't just walk into schools these days. Um, but since we have now four projects with the school district, which we seem to be just sort of not part of. I mean, we, we agreed that, um, and we certainly give them your time, which is, which is a large commodity. Um, and I think we've paid some, you know, some of the costs of some of the other ones. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, it doesn't give us a sense that we're really doing these things. Is that fair to say? Um, yes, yes. Uh, yes. And, and, you know, for me, and, and I'll let it go uh, as such, uh, we're a team, and uh, it doesn't matter. There's an old wise tale, if you believe it or not. It doesn't matter who makes the most money, I'm talking about in relationships, uh, because we all can sit down and enjoy it. For me, it doesn't matter who's in charge, because if it's a, if it's a success, we're all successful, you know. That's kind of my approach. But uh, like in most relationships, uh, communication tends to be an issue. And that's where I'm coming from. We just need to communicate better. Uh, in most relationships, it's uh, immoral not to lecture or get on the soapbox. I don't think there's anything immoral going on. You know? And lastly, finances <laughs> can ruin a relationship. <laughs> we agree or disagree. We don't have that issue. But if we can just communicate better as spoken as a preacher, as, as, as a former preacher, I don't want to say a couple, you know, yeah. as the education committee, that would be helpful. Uh, so, so we all can sit down. Yeah, I think, yeah. I, I, I think there's a, a common concern here, and the question is, going forward, how can we do this? Um, and I think, at at very least, there should be a meeting of the Education Committee with Jennifer and um, Denise, if you can make it, and go over this calendar going forward and decide how much participation you need from the Commission or how much the Commission would like to, to do. Um, you know, Exactly. I mean, because now we've we've really, you know, we've sort of defined four or five things that that we would like to to do, especially if we're going to say that it's a project of the Arts Commission. Um, and so I think, you know, the only unresolved thing is what to do with portraits of a city. But going forward, I think we should probably figure out these things ahead of time. And you know, it was disappointing to hear that the Martin Luther King exhibit went to the library, but because of a scheduling conflict there, it only stayed up for you know, a very short time. It was up for a month. But no one knew about it. And you know, I wasn't in town for Martin Luther King's birthday, and I 
didn't ever see the exhibit because you know it really wasn't made clear where it was and how you could see it. So let's try to let's try to do better next year. Um, so can we recommend that? Well, we'll just redistribute this calendar again um, prior to our next um, meeting, and also that um, uh, we hold. Um, subcommittee meetings with Ms. Henning, if possible, even really brief ones, um, as needed. Um, it seems like the bulk of our programs for next year are education and community partnership focused, so that should probably be the first one, but that it's something that maybe once a month Ms. Henning can allocate 45 minutes to an hour of her time, maybe on a Wednesday, to meet with us, to meet with whatever subcommittee has pressing issues, and maybe there will be some months where we won't need to have that meeting, but if it could be a placeholder in Ms. Henning's uh, calendar, that would be really great. And then we know we have those opportunities. And I think probably um, the, the, the agenda goes out one week before the meeting, so that's the, um, the first Thursday. We're on the second. Mm -hmm. So backing up should probably be the week after our meeting. So one, one went, you know, if we meet on Thursday the 1st, it would be the next Wednesday for subcommittee meetings. And again, if we know that, everyone but Tom will be able to come because he teaches on Wednesdays, um, or may not next semester. But I think that's a, that's a great idea to have sort of a slot for whatever mm -hmm. subcommittee. Um, and the other thing is, for example, this when this gets revised, um, it would be great if you could just send it out to us. I mean, because we won't have another meeting for quite a while. So, you know, as soon as it's revised and if everyone will promise to take a look at it. And <laughs> yeah, I, I agree with that. That would be helpful, especially in working with the museum. I'd like to send them something that doesn't have a um, a little typo on October 5th. <laughs> Just is my name is spelled? Um, <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. We won't read it we into the minutes. minutes. But, um, <laughs> Just a minor <laughs> one. So, okay. October 5th, you'll October see. October 5th, um, the pu pu public art collection. <laughs> so, so if we could just get a fresh one. So, so no, if we could get a fresh one, that would be great. I am not going to be showing my private parts at Village Fest. Okay. So let's just be uh, yeah, clear here. <laughs> you know, to do a spell check. I always do it, and I didn't undo it. Thank you. Yeah, right. Thank you. Oh, that, oh, thank, yeah. you that be thing. Okay. thank you, Miss Honey. All right. So <laughs> the um, the recommendations on this on education outreach programming are. Number one, that uh, the education subcommittee meet with Ms. Henning in, in the near term to sort of go over this again, the schedule, um, and see what things need to be set in motion before fall, um, including perhaps coming up with some ideas for that October 14th date at the Desert Art Center. Um, and secondly, a recommendation um, that starting in the fall, we have a sort of standing meeting for subcommittees. Uh, the other thing is we will be able to have three people on a subcommittee as soon as we get two more people. So um, I think that that's, that will be very helpful. Uh, but I think between the study session and today, we've just come a long, a long way towards sort of having a plan. Um, and the, um, as soon as we get through being on the um, Community Art Exhibitions Subcommittee, the publicity and art, art mm -hmm. outreach mm -hmm. to take this schedule and let's get it out yes. as much as we can. Absolutely. Okay, um, all right, let's move on to sites and installations. Um, over the course of the last couple of meetings, we have um, sort of focused in on and approved 
the relocation of the John Clement sculptures to the Chocolates Medium, the relocation of our hero within Victoria Park to another location, and the fabrication and installation of two public bicycle racks. Um, the, um, I don't believe the subcommittee has met because all of those things were just, um, had already been approved. So we really just need to know how you're doing on um, moving stuff. Yeah. Um, Jennifer, when I worked on a memo to David Reddy, so we put that all in writing and I asked him, I said, because he had asked our re request that he'll just ask council if this is okay. So that's already been sent out what, about two weeks ago now. So I'm waiting to hear back. Oh, two weeks, weeks ago. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I'll follow up with him, but okay. that's in his hands now. So and it has all of those. It has all of it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And nothing else. Nothing else. <laughs> nothing else. <laughs> nothing else. <laughs> nothing else. <laughs> okay. Frank Bogart was not mentioned at all. <laughs> okay. Um, that's great. And I think that everything else to do with um, just the sort of backlog of moving things is, is on here, and that's great. And again, because we won't meet for a while, if you could let us know when it does happen and maybe take a few pictures. Um, it's just nice to, you know, especially pictures of big cranes moving pieces of art. Uh, so, yeah, if you could, you know, send, send us a memo every now and then so we feel like we're still part of things. Um, of course, this one's going to Italy, and Tom's going to France, and, you know. Oh, wow. Are you out of the country, Ollie? No. <laughs> in, I'm in <laughs> Connecticut. <laughs> Let me hear. Let me hear. Okay. All right. Last item um, on the agenda is the Transgender Day of Remembrance Sculpture Project. Um, there was going to be a subcommittee to look into the options for a base. Did that? Did did the subcommittee have a chance to meet about? Okay. I guess that was Lee and Tom, and he had I, he has not reached out to me. So he did have final exams. I'll tell you what I would like to recommend. Um, I have had some conversations with Jeff Coors, Councilman Coors, because he's taken an interest in this, and um, he suggested because we were having such difficulty um, finding an outdoor location that would be safe and. I mean, everyone had concerns about different locations. Um, he suggested that perhaps it could go indoors somewhere, like in the lobby of the convention center for a period of time. Um, there was also some talk from the committee that commissioned the sculpture and which owns it so far, they haven't given it to the city, that they might want to lend it to other communities which would also argue for not a permanent thing. So I would like to request that the subcommittee or just um, the staff um, consult with Councilman Coors about, I mean, I think we've reached the end of what we can do to finish off this sculpture. Um, and it's certainly not displayable in its current state. The goal was to have it somewhere by November. Um, but I think since whatever decision we make would have to go to council, I would like to, to turn it back to Councilman Coors to give us some direction about what they're, what they're willing to do. Um, we did months ago commit to up to $5,000 to be able to display it, which could be a wooden base, it could be any number of things other than a big marble base, which was the first idea. Um, but I think at this point, it, it, we're not, we can't go much further sort of imagining places it could go and then sending it to council because I think um, they're, they're gonna have to make the decision and. He's the one, so. So maybe write him a memo. Uh, 
um, you know, with some pictures of it. And uh, he's, he's just very interested in supporting the group and having something for the Transgender Day of Remembrance. Because if I understand correctly, the mother of the, the girl who is, um, was the inspiration for this sculpture is coming to this. Oh, wow. Um, so, you know, they'd really like to, and, you know, we've, we've encouraged them and we've tried to help them and we've given them advice and Ms. Henning found them a sculptor. Um, but at a certain point, you know, if they are going to give it to the city or if they're going to locate it somewhere, it, it has to go to council. So. Also in our study session, Madam Chairman, we talked about, um, and I don't know where this fits in, uh, community involvement, uh, Mr. Mr. Owen, and uh, yes. several other people. Uh, right. So, you know, yes. somewhere in there. Somewhere, except that we just, we, we've come up short with plausible locations mm -hmm. to put it, and what kind of a base or anything else would make it weatherproof um, or childproof and a lot of other things. It, it turns out to be, I don't even know how many, but an awful lot of butterflies. Um, <laughs> and so does anyone else have any other suggestion other than that we ask the staff to write a memo to, yes, yes. Be, my, be our guest. I think it's wise that the chair board here today, you've made uh, a good decision to send it back to council from a manufacturing point of view and from a sculptor point of view after reviewing closer pictures of that again I'm glad that you're concerned with the safety concern of it um, it appears from knowing the, some of the other sculpts the sculptors work and having a chance to see it in that it becomes a very delicate piece that Basically, it can be in a room, but it's got to have a fence around it and keep people away from it. Um, things like that, not only the safety factor concern me, but the costs that we continually occur on maintenance projects on some of this artwork that it might be a really great piece like the fountain was downtown. But we've spent over $150,000 on that fountain of the citizens' money to maintain something that's probably going to get taken out in the next couple of years because it's wore out. And so I really advise that, that your subcommittee look into the longevity of anything that you take in, plus the maintenance factor. It's like everything. We might get a grant to put to build something, but we have no money to maintain it, so then we have to go back to the citizens and burden them with something that 30% of the population likes and the other 70% doesn't like, but the, all 100% of us is paying for that to make the 30% happy. So hopefully the subcommittee and yourselves would look at things like this and please call me at any time from any standpoint. That is my, my deal. Plus I am a sculpture. I've been doing this for 45 years and I understand and I can show you the pitfalls or the the mm -hmm. promises of the good parts of any sculpture that's there. And I'd be more than happy to advise you on some of those things. But thank please, you very much. Please don't burden us with any more no, no. taxes. And, 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 really, and actually, some of your concerns that you brought up at the last meeting are the reason that we've, we've sort of I would, I would I be happy given to, up, but we, we see that outdoor installations yeah. of this would be pretty difficult to yeah someplace inside you know behind a railing or whatever at the convention center or something like that and yes it probably would be nice that you could share it with all the valley cities yeah uh, but then again we shouldn't if all the valley cities want to want to have it then everybody should chip yeah. in for the base no i think <laughs> this is more a question of um around the country if they yeah. if they keep it and they just put it on loan to us. Right. Um, and if it's indoors, it's possible that it could be on a table. I mean, it's about the size of one of these tables yeah. with, a, with a cloth. I, I don't know because we only have photos of it. Um, right. But I think it's going to, it's a very impressive sculpture. Um, 
but it turned out to not be an outdoor piece, uh, Pretty much. which is what they thought it, originally it was. Um, and, and I would be happy to any time talk to Councilman Coors and show him the pitfalls of different pieces of art. I have a lot that I have built all over the city on many houses and that over the years. And stuff is still standing that is, is there. Mm -hmm. you, you just have to, when you build something like that, you got to put it in the mind of anything that could possibly happen or who would try and vandalize it. And that one just scares me because of, of the repairs it would take to repair it, mm -hmm. should it be in an outdoor setting or where you, the committee, or the city does not have control of it. So I appreciate your concerns and thank you. Thank you, no, and thank yeah. you for bringing them out. Um, we have a we have a rule of um, safety here, which we we learned from Commissioner Gladstone, which is we plant cactuses around things we don't want people to climb up on. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a great system. Okay, so uh, so our recommendation is to ask the staff, and um, it would be great if you would copy us on this memo to, um, or if you like, the memo can come from the commission and we'll copy you, um, but we really need some guidance um, as to what they would like us. Okay. Um, let me talk to David about that and see which direction we could, should go. Maybe we should go directly through him. I don't know if we could go directly to the council members. I'm not really sure. I'm kind of new to this. So why don't I check with him and then I'll get uh, send an email to you and we'll, we'll get it out. Um, okay. Um, like by next, early next week, I'll, okay. I'll get an It's really for just you. a question of, at this point, some guidance okay. before we, at this point, all we have to bring to them is this top part. Um, <laughs> and we know that Jeff and perhaps other council members are, are supportive of it getting done. Um, but the nature of it has changed since the very beginning. Um, Tommy Clinton came in with a, a model he'd made himself, and it was sort of like a big funeral beer with this, <laughs> yeah. um, you know, he saw it as a massive sort of thing. And it's turned out to be a very delicate thing, which I think can be admired close up and, um, and the, the metaphor of the butterfly is wonderful. It's really, and it was done by a very worthwhile artist. Um, he's Satow, so now we just need to figure out how to, how to finish this. So what's next, you want to know? Yeah. Okay. Right. We'll and, find that out. Right. And we'll do whatever the, the council will approve at the end of the process. I mean, there's no <laughs> point in our coming up with a a scheme that um, they haven't been part of. So. Okay, um, we have no legislative issues. Um, we've done all the subcommittee reports. Um, let's go around, um, since it's our last meeting before the fall, um, and each commissioner, please make any comments or requests um, that you'd like us to think about. Um, commissioner Murray, why don't you start? Yes. Um It's been, it's been an exciting, I guess you can say, season. <laughs> I enjoyed every minute of it, and I look forward uh, to the future. Um, I, I do have one question. The artists and residents, have we selected who that person is? Or there was some mention about keeping our fingers crossed. Which, yes. where is Has there? there been any other information? Which artist uh, yeah. and residents? Uh, it was something that we talked about at the uh, study session. Yeah. There was a possible uh, project in the spring with the school. With the yeah, school. yeah. No, I have not. There's no name. I haven't heard anything about that yet. Okay, so we don't have an artist in residence or resident. But I think we, if, if this Select. goes forward, I think yes. we need to be okay. part of that. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm glad we were unable to take the pall, I'm using church language again, the funeral pall, <laughs> uh, off of our. Uh, Communication. And, uh, I look forward to, to getting cool. involved more. That's all I have. Okay. 
Wow, so it's the end of my first year here, and um, I want to thank all my fellow commissioners and staff members that have made it, uh, <laughs> made, it <through>. <laughs> <laughs> made it through with us, it, it, and it's been a great experience. Um, I know that we uh, have people now looking at joining us, so we're thrilled certainly about that expansion, and I certainly will do whatever I can when they come on board to try to bring people up to speed as quickly as possible. Um, the one thing, uh, not to beat the dead horse, but communication, I think one of the things that happens on a staff level between the city and the school board, there's so much that goes on all the time on this level and they forget that it's, we don't want to be overseers, we just want to know what's going on and I don't think it's to in any way slow down the process, but it, it's really um, not a good reflection on anyone when as commissioner someone's talking to you about something and you have that blank look like what I didn't hear about it so and, and some of that is on us but I do think that's one of those things that you kind of forget um, when you're working on the staff level that and, and I know I knew a lot more about what was going on just because of my involvement um, in the gallery and the a lot of that going on in that space so um, I'm sorry that more of the commissioners um, weren't aware and, and I can even be better about some of the knowledge that I have knowing that I can only talk to one of you at a time. I read your blog. <laughs> thank you, <laughs> yes, and, and there is always the blog. <laughs> so anyway, thank you all. Have a wonderful time and I will be holding down the fort here all summer so wonderful. if anyone has any public art thoughts, hear it. <laughs> um, thanks for another great year. Um, I'd like to um, ask my fellow commissioners that are, we take this summer to really extend um, our communication with our partners in the arts community. And while it's a little slower here, we can go and say hello to a lot of people. And so um, I'd like us, our subcommittees to really try to meet, even though we're kind of skeleton crew, um, when possible. I'm only gone for a couple of weeks. <laughs> I'm not gone all summer. So, uh, um, and in that vein, um, so if, you know, as commissioners, we'll all be sort of moving our programs forward. I'd also just like to friendly remind our staff that I'd really love to see the bids um, for photographing our collection, which was something we wanted to do this fall to see if, you know, by the next meeting we can really have moved forward with that. I think that's an important project that we should, um, you know, start on now, um, as well as um, moving forward on our sites and installation projects, really getting those projected dates of installation done and just getting the updated calendar. So thank you. Um, my comments are, I, I, you've very well talked about um, our feeling that we would like to have better communication and, and be more part of what's going on. And since the last thing on the agenda is reports of staff um, or directors, maybe first Ms. Henning and then Ms. Goolsby would respond to this question of what, we, what, can, what do you think we can do and can you, can you tell us some ways in which you might communicate with us between meetings and certainly over the summer? Um, well, what I do, is okay to go? What yes. I do is, um, you know, uh, uh, as Office of Neighborhood uh, Manager, I send out a weekly report to the, uh, the neighborhood groups. So there's probably 250 people on the list. It goes out to the city council. It goes out to just about everybody. And so I do a, run a whole list of everything that's going on, every meeting that the city's having in the next couple of weeks. It's really, and people, I've gotten good feedback. And the mayor even said it says it's the, the list he uh, relies on because it has everything. And it's mm -hmm. only because everything comes mm -hmm. to him. So that maybe there could be some regular um, correspondence or email in that way. Um, I think just keeping in touch that it really does weekly is really good and it really gets the conversations going. Um, okay. well, I think we need to market you guys a little bit more. I mean, you guys have a lot of good things going on and more press releases and more like making more visual. Maybe we mm -hmm. can bring one of your, um, maybe the portraits of the city. Could that be at City Hall? Do we ever put art? I remember you used to have art. We used to have art at City Hall we often. Did, really? Yes. Did we don't can we do that? And the, that would be the best place. I guess I mean, people walk in and it's just like this big area there, like Absolutely. lobby for a little. How big is the, the lobby or the um, 
I mean, there is some art in the lobby of the council chambers, yeah. but I, it, perhaps it could just be taken down. Lobby, the, like in the city hall, like yeah. right when you walk in at the yeah reception. Right, or yeah, when you walk into the council, mm -hmm. or maybe split it, you know, 10 and 10. Yeah. Um, it seems like they did it years ago, didn't they? Or they used to have art shows there, the kids' art I, shows? I think and we would. What happened? I don't know. Oh, maybe there's I, we would love that. Okay. Um, well, that would be our first choice for where to put Portraits of exhibit, the city. Right, exactly. Because it belongs the city, right? Exactly. And then we can just publicize it like mad. Right. Um, so um, I think it should probably be up by in early September because um, the council doesn't meet in August. Things are, are fairly quiet. Yeah. But, um, and I, even though they don't do presentations at council meetings anymore, no, no show and tell, which yeah. I think is really too bad, um, I think that we could probably ask to just tell everyone what is in the lobby um, at, you know, at the first council meeting or something. And that would, I, that's, that's brilliant to have it in City Hall, so. Just seems fitting. And since it's just 20 pieces, and oh. each one is framed separately, even if it had to be in two locations, it, it would be fine, you know, with good signage to say where else to see them. And a, and a little explanation of where the photos were taken and, you know, what the kids did and that it was Al's idea. <laughs> <laughs> It's, um, that's great. And a week, um, Jennifer, do you think you could just drop us a line once a week? <laughs> or everyone can sign up to Denise's, Denise's newsletter. Well, yeah. okay. can. If you put, well, can't you just put the commissioners on Put us on your I can newsletter. Add your list. Yeah. That would be great. Yeah. Right, why don't I do that? I'll put all you guys on. But I, or sign up underneath your neighborhood organization. Mm -hmm. I know I get mm -hmm. emails yeah. personally no, but this is and through work. Like, just how the, how the progress is going with moving those sculptures or, you know, sure. just a little, like, 5 o'clock on Thursday, just... Yeah. And that's about what I do at 5 o'clock on Thursday. And, <laughs> yeah, a picture or two or yeah. um, just next week we're going to move this one or just the, all the stuff that's going to go on. Um, and, you know, if, if you get word back from Dr. Reddy or, you know, it just, just tell us. Okay. And just because we, unfortunately, because of the Brown Act and everything else, we can't yeah. really... We have to communicate through you guys. Um, cool. So, I'm happy to do it. And if a subcommittee comes up with an idea and send it to you, maybe you could send it out and everybody could just sort of chime in. Like if we come up with an idea for that October 14th date and you send it to them, they send it out, you know, um, it's a tough way to have a discussion, but that's, I think, where you get the best ideas, though, is when talk about it so all right is there any any other business then I got nothing except tonight's opening reception or to celebrate the students and the work that they've done during this project so if you're available I suggest you attend the work looks beautiful um, students will be there. Six o'clock. All the students will be there. As far as I know, the majority of the subjects will also be there. So, are you doing like certificates for them or anything, or just? No, gonna... this is a class. This was not part of a um, contest, if you will. Their work went into getting these portraits done and learning. So that's what this is about: a celebration of the work and completion of a class. Did they get a grade, or did they just? They get, did. They yeah? did get a grade, and also, you know, um, this started uh, in the fall with a special, another specialized program that was happening the first semester. I mean, the first half of the school year, um, with a graphic artist. Uh, I can't recall his name right now, mm -hmm. but he was working with the students and teaching them about Photoshop and manipulating images and graphic design, which also went into the production of a book Thank for you. the Annie show yeah. that was yes. Yes. So yes. that was the first half of the sem um, school year. The second half was taking those okay. skills and applying it to portraiture and But it um, wasn't the same 
kids, though, right? No. Uh, some, I mean, was it part of the lines. Art Institute, the photography not, one? Because the um, Annie Project was. There's a group of kids that are within I, Palm Springs I, High I, School that are specializing in the mm -hmm. arts. And so they did the posters for Annie. I don't know if there's a, another photography class or this is one of those 7 a.m. things, though, right? Oh. We're not yeah. going to. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> All right. Oh. So, um, what's the date in September that we're coming back? Eighth or something? 14th. Okay. Um, I would like a motion to adjourn to our next regular meeting on September 14th, 2017. Hopefully in City Hall. Yes. Is that yes, the plan? they're going to turn it. Yeah, I talked to them. Actually, <laughs> I'm, writing, I'm writing a story for the City Beat the Employee newsletter, and they're um, they're going to have it all done. They're going to have checked out. I mean, they've been just going, you know, 90 miles an hour. Every Great. Day. They're going to turn it over to the um, the city on September 1st. So, okay. I mean, that's the deal. They need to be back in there. Yeah. Okay. okay. For the first council. Very meeting. good. I'm um, making a motion to adjourn until our September 14th meeting at City Hall. When it's cooler. A second. <laughs> Any objections? The motion passes. Thank you all. I think you. you know it's been uh, it's been hard with so few people, but I think we you know I'm looking forward to being back to seven people, and then we'll have yeah. more more people to work on things. So. <laughs>